Welcome back to your weekly review here on Survival Preparedness for Beginners. It's Sunday morning, it's 8 a.m., and this is what has happened in your week and a few things that are coming up in the week ahead. So let's get started with the fun fact of the day. In 1966, USA lost a hydrogen bomb in the Mediterranean Sea and struggled to find it. Finally, a Spanish fisherman, hmm, help them find it. The U.S. Secretary of Defense said the bomb was worth $2 billion. That's $2 billion. The fisherman asked for $20 million, or 1% of the value in accordance with the custom of maritime law. The Air Force eventually settled out of court for an undisclosed amount of sums. So hopefully the fisherman got a little bit of money out of that one if he's going to help them find them. On September 27, 1964, the government publicly released the report of the Warren Commission, for a view that don't know history, which concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald had acted alone in assassinating President John F. Kennedy. On this date in 1779, John Adams was named by Congress to negotiate the Revolutionary War's peace terms with Britain. Now, on this date, September 27th, some of the famous people that have died on this date, you got it, the Playboy guy, Hugh Hefner, he died in 2017. Uh, Cliff Burton, he was Metallica's uh, bassist, uh, he died in 1986 on this date. And Marty Ballin, he was a rock singer for, one of the lead singers for Jefferson Starship and Jefferson Airplane. Just a little bit more information there for you and we're going to throw in a little weather report too so this coming week in the weather this past week it was pretty hot we had a cool down here in florida for a couple days and then the heat came right back but this coming week there's cold fronts going to push all the way down almost to the, the gulf and the jet stream's going to do this big dip so the whole center of the country and stuff's all going to be nice and cool um, probably starting Tuesday, Wednesday sometime frame through the weekend. Uh, your temperatures are going to start dropping back down into uh, in the northeast and stuff. You know, 50s, 60s during the day, you know, uh, 30s, 40s at night, depending on your elevation. Um, you're going to get rain. Uh, we're going to have rain down here uh, Monday, Tuesday, and up north and the northeast down from, say, the upper peninsula of Michigan and come down through um, the Ohio Valley, back over through Pennsylvania, back up into the Northeast, you got a pretty good chance of getting some rain coming your way, which I know uh, some of the parts of the Northeast could really use the rain. Uh, the temperatures at night with the cooling off and stuff, let's just hope that, that you know, because there are talking some areas could go down in the 30s. Uh, they could have frost and freeze warnings again uh, through the Midwest, all the way down um, across and back up into the northeast so let's hope this doesn't affect any of the farmers and their harvest and what's going on with that because um, the last thing we need is any more destruction with the food supply chain it's just horrible but it is going to be a welcome cool down for a lot of people in the south because we're really getting we need a break from the 90s and hundreds uh, you know the field like temperatures uh, we really need to get to uh, some comfortable weather would be really nice and we're supposed to be in the 80s, low 80s, 82 and low 60s at night. So that's kind of your outlook on your weather. And then if you look out west, those poor people out there, they're dealing with the high pressure that's going to be moving in and um, with, between the smog and the smoke. Uh, if you have a mask, make sure that you're wearing it when you go outside because not only do you need it for Charlie Victor 19, but you need it because you can't breathe the damn air. That's going to kill you faster than Charlie Victor 19. And then you look up in Alaska and it's going to be like well above average, big time, all the way up in Alaska. The weather is just really freaky, people. So stay tuned. So that's your weather forecast for the upcoming week here on Survival Preparedness for Beginners. 
on your Sunday morning. Thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it for taking time out and I hope you get a little bit of information that maybe you missed or you might find kind of interesting. Okay, now we all know that uh, this past week uh, um, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg has been uh, moving around Washington from the Capitol to, you know, the Supreme Court and all that kind of stuff because she needs to lay in state. Uh, when, the televi when the television news outlets started broadcasting the ceremonies and honoring the, the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg this week on Friday and noted she was the first woman to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol, some viewers may have been confused and there was people that were saying, no, she wasn't. Um, Rosa Parks, the civil rights icon whose casket laid in the U.S. Capitol rotunda after her 2005 death was the first woman to lie in state. Now, there are some differences here, so I'm going to clarify those for you real quick in case you didn't know. What does it mean to lie in state versus in honor versus in repose? All right. <clears throat> um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was the first woman to lie in state at the Capitol because she was a member of the Supreme Court. Only government officials lie in state. Rosa Parks was a private citizen when she died at the age of 92 and was recorded with the recognition of lying in honor at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda on October 3rd and 31st of 2005. If a government official's coffin is placed in a public place outside the Capitol, it is described as lying in repose. And that is the difference. Now, on to some news of the week. We all know that President Trump is looking to nominate someone for president. And at the time of shooting of this video, that has not taken place yet because I have to have time to edit and upload and everything for this to be out on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So this video was done before he made his official announcement. But it was looking like from what I could find on all the news channels, they're all pretty much in agreement that Amy uh, Bar uh, Barrett was to replace um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, he was going to be nominating her. Um, now, if that did not take place, I am sorry. But like I said, this was filmed beforehand. Um, she does come with uh, quite the interesting... Um, well, you just Google her and you make your own assumptions. Now, on another note, New York reports the first 1,000 coronavirus cases for the first time in months which may not be a good thing. You know, they worked so hard to get the numbers down and everything, and um, now everything is just going back the other direction. Uh, since uh, June 5th, you know, um, they've been really on lockdown and everything else. Unlike if you want to come down here to Florida, and you can come down here, and our governor just opened everything up this week. Uh, so if you want to go to the restaurant, they're open 100%. Want to stay at a hotel, they're open 100%. Come on down, catch the Charlie Victor 19. Take it home with you because we don't want it. One way we can get rid of it. Sorry about that. Johnson & Johnson shares promising early vaccination trial results. They really didn't share much from the results, if you really want to ask me. Um, the stage uh, Charlie Victor 19 vaccine uh, clinical trials Friday reported that 99% of the participants uh, between the ages of 18 and 55 developed uh, antibodies against the uh, novel Charlie Victor 19. Uh, the analysts also found that most of the side effects associated with the vaccine were mild and resolved within a matter of days. They didn't list what any of those may be, um, so we have no idea. It wasn't clear, however, whether uh, people over 65 were well protected since you um, lost my train of thought. Response uh, results were uh, unavailable because there were only 15 pe people in that demographic. Now, why would you put only 15 people out of the people over 65 in your test? I don't get that. It didn't make any sense to me. Maybe it does to you, but it doesn't make any sense to me, uh, considering that's one of the vulnerable age groups. 
don't know. Uh, they're pushing to have a one dose um, um, antibody that they can just give us one shot and you're good to go. Whereas in the other companies are doing it in a two shot deal. You get one now, one later. Um, they are going to be starting their third trial. They're launching their phase three trial in which they're going to have 60,000 volunteers, uh, which will enroll across three continents. Eventually proves to a single dose is safe and effective. It could simplify the disposition of the vaccine. Um, I think they're moving a little along a little too fast, but hey, what do I know? Now, um, on a more serious note, uh, Portland preparing for a potential violent dueling protest. All right, we got these, uh, these guys, they're called Proud Boys, all right? Portland, Oregon is preparing for members of the far-right group, the Proud Boys, to arrive in the city in large numbers on Saturday evening, stroking fears of clash between dueling protesters. Attention continue to rise across the United States following the decision not to charge Louisville, Kentucky police officers for killing Breonna Taylor. We all know about that one. So these dudes here, the Proud Boys, who are known to engage in violent conflict and headed to Portland for what the group describes as a, quote, free speech event in support of President Trump and the police, as well as a rally to end domestic terrorism, likely referring to Portland's left-wing activists who have been demonstrating against police brutality for months have planned rallies in response to the Proud Boys. Local and state officials have condemned the Proud Boys gathering and coming to Portland and are sending in reinforcements to aid Portland's police for officers and force. Now, if one would think about this, if these guys are for Trump and for the police, are they bringing in extra people to try to keep the groups apart? Or are they bring in an extra people because the groups are all going to get out of hand and everybody's just going to be one big mess. Um, people really need to start paying attention to what's going on in the news as far as over the next 36, 35 days. Because I think the closer we get to the election and after election, I think the shit's going to hit the fan, if you know what I'm saying. So you want to make sure that you're prepared. Just saying, you can do what you wish. All right, in a new year, a little different news here. This week, did anybody know that an asteroid actually almost came really close to hitting the Earth? Bet you didn't. We really don't hear much about that on the TV. Um, in a near year, uh, that seemingly keeps just giving, keep on giving, and perhaps, you know, it's not surprising that NASA's newly discovered asteroid called the 2020 SW, um, will give Earth a not so socially distance pass. No pun intended. All right. Discovered only on September 18th in Tucson, Arizona. Now, it was discovered on the 18th and it made the pass on the 24th of this week, on Thursday. Okay. That's not real good, people. Um, we're dropping the ball here, you know. What would you do if this thing was the size of, you know, six freight trains coming at you? Think about it. We just found it. Maybe somebody needs to hire somebody to go outside and clean the lens a little bit. Just saying. The school bus size asteroid, which is estimated to be somewhat between 20 to 30 feet in diameter, is expected to gaze past our planet's surface within about 13,000 miles of breathing room. That's pretty damn close, people. This falls well below the orbit of our satellites, which are located about 22,000 miles above the Earth's surface. In its closest approach, the Earth will occur around 7.12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, that was September 24th. As it skirts over the southern Pacific Ocean near Australia and New Zealand, its approach will be so close to the Earth that our gravity will alter its speed and trajectory. And that, folks, will wrap it up for this Sunday. It's an edition of Your Week in the News. Now, as we end here, as I was talking before, everybody needs to pay attention to what is going on and keep prepping. So until next time, 
This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'll catch you next Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Stay safe, people.